First thing, the requirements in the TAR database. The compatible in the TAR system must be the same or higher. So you cannot use this method to go to a lower release or a lower compatible. You can only use this to go to the same or higher release and also with the compatible. Regarding the short set, we always recommend you to be at the same short set and national short set. For time zones and time zone file version, we also recommend you to have the same or higher ones. Uh, you can have lower ones only if you don't have a timestamp with local time zone in your database. Now talking about pluggable databases. Imagine you are moving from a database which has a short set as ASCII, and now you're moving to a higher release uh, in a pluggable database architecture. Should you create your CDB as ASCII as the short set in the starter system? No, don't do that. We don't recommend this approach because what we recommend you to do since the 12.2 release is to have your CDB in AL32 UTF-8 short set. And why? Because when you have your CDB in this short set, you can have the pluggable databases in any short set. However, when you create a brand new pluggable database in the, target, in the target CDB to receive your transportable table spaces, when you create it in a CDB that has AL32 UTF-8, the PDB will have the same, the same uh, short set. So in this case, what we recommend you to do to have a PDB in the same short set as the source system is to create a temporary CDB with the short set of your source system. Then you, you create a pluggable database in that short set. And finally, you move this pluggable database from this temporary CDB that you created in that special short set to your final PDB, which is your production CDB that's gonna receive the transportable table spaces from the source system, okay? Regarding the time zone file, uh, if the source and target database time zone file versions don't match, the tables which has timestamp with time zone, they will be skipped. Uh, and what you can do is you can import them separately afterwards using data pump. Regarding blockchain tracking, we strongly recommend you to enable BCT. And the reason why we recommend you to enable it is because your backups, the level one incremental backups will be much faster. As I said before, for Armen, uh, for the Armen strategy, when you have blockchain tracking enabled, Oracle database won't do a full scan your date on your data files to identify uh, the blocks that changed since the latest level one or level zero. What it's gonna do, it's gonna keep a track of everything that changed in a separate file. And when you run your incremental level one backup, it's gonna pick those blocks and put your backup set. So this is gonna be much faster. Regarding the conversion, we recommend you to convert usually on the target system because usually the target system is a newer system and the conversion will be much faster, especially because your target system is being prepared and uh, you don't have any production workload running usually in your target system, while your source system is still with your production running on it. Use the Perl scripts uh, to do the conversion. The Perl scripts can do this for you. And the requirements you have is enterprise edition if you are on premises or at Sadata. And if you are in the cloud, you must use enterprise edition extreme support, extreme performance uh, that is available on the DBCS solutions. Now talking about encryption. Unfortunately, table space encryption is not supported when you are going cross NDNS. The reason for that is that uh, our man doesn't know how to convert from big endian to, to little endian or the opposite while you have your table spaces encrypted. So if you're going to the same endianness, this is okay. But if you're going cross endianness, then you need to, before uh, doing this conversion, you need to decrypt before migrating it. And then you can encrypt back after you, go, you are in your target environment. Remember that since 12.201, you can encrypt and decrypt in an online way. You don't need to stop your system 
or stop your production workload to do an encryption or decrypt, decrypt, decryption of your data files. And finally, the Perl script. The Perl script that automate all those steps for you, they are available in this MyOracle Spore node 2471245.1. Downloaded there, you have also all the instructions contained in this support node. The requirement to use this automation is the source system must be at least 10, 2, or 3, and the target system must be at least 11, 2, or 4. So what are the best practices for this method to work? First thing, you need to test it and test it a lot. Create some lab environments, try it on a pre-prod environment or in a dev environment. Don't go straight to the production. First, test this in other environments before trying it in your production environment. Also, whenever possible, automate it. I already migrated a lot of databases using this method, and I always create a shell script with all the steps uh, to be executed automatically for me. So all I need to do is call that shell script. I don't need to do it step by step, especially while I'm doing the level one incremental loop, while when I take the level one backup on the source system, I move this backup to the target environment and apply there. So I automate it so I don't need to keep running those incremental steps all the time. Save all the logs for later chat. In case you have any issues, you can see on the logs if you had any, any troubles there. And also, in case of failure or rollback, create a cleanup procedure. And then you can repeat your test multiple times. Don't forget to put your source environment in a, in, uh, offline after you do the migration. So with this, you will avoid any case of split brain, where you accidentally have some leftover applications that connect in the old system.